from Paleozoic and Mesozoic on the east side. I think the Maloney's Fault, as mapped to the south here, in fact extends up into faults that are on the east side of the Sparkville complex and not basically uh, where it's shown on the map. Yeah. Do you think the Smartville continues under the Mark Hanks? Uh, yeah, the question is, can the Smartville continue underneath the volcanics up in here? Um, I'm not sure. We can see the north, what seems to be the north end of the Smartville here on Highway 70 as we head up across Lake Oroville, but that's as far north as one sees it. Having said that, there are some rocks up in here that appear to be ophiolitic in nature and nobody's actually looked at those adequately. So, okay? All right? All right. Has your, has your cross-section been published? My cross-section is published, yes. Uh, cross-section was published in 2002 in International Geological Review. It was also published in the, uh, I believe it's the, um, uh, the Thompson Memorial Volume. The Thompson volume, which is one that was put out by Bellwether Press and the, the GSA uh, together in 2002. Okay. Okay. Now um, we've got that. Okay. So let's go to this. Okay. Our. Uh, this is a hastily drawn cross-section, if you will, excuse the mistakes of a type or an ideal ophiolite sequence. Um, going down from top to bottom, you see sediments on top. Those are either volcanic genic sediments, as symbolized here, or pelagic sediments in many cases, so forth. Then you go down into an extrusive complex, which is mainly a pillow lavas, right? that is sub aqueous lavas, you can get pillow lavas in lakes, and they have massive flows and also inter, intervening sediments and so forth. And here and there, and I didn't put it on here, there are uh, uh, ore deposits in, associated with these things, which are fossil black smoker deposits and, and associated uh, related to that. That grades downward into sheeted dikes. And what that means, it's a dike complex in which the dikes have come up within the dikes So, in many places. So what you see are one-way chilled margins. So yeah, uh, somebody is pointing. You have dikes, one coming up, another one comes up, another one comes up, another one comes up, another one comes up like that. So when you look at these, you see a chilled margin, and then you see another chilled margin going the same way. So you see the evidence of dike in that way. And I hope to show you that on the next hot drop. Uh, and then you go into a very textured, coarse, very textured gabbro down into some sort of layered complex which includes uh, plagioclase cumulates at the top, uh, going down into olivine and pyroxene cumulates at the bottom. And then you go into mantle tectonite, that is fossil mantle rock that never went through an igneous phase. It was the material from which the magma that was sweated out to cause the oceanic crust. And so that you see, and then you uh, go from that into some sort of tectonically underlying rocks and so forth. So is the mantle tectonite like pruritite? The mantle tectonite is pruritite, dunite, yeah. And the pruritite can be of two types. It can be, it can be two pyroxene pruritite, or uh, which is a, a lertholite, uh, named for the Etang de Lertz in the Pyrenees, or it can be a Hartsburgite, named for Hartz, the uh, Hartz Mountains of Germany, uh, which is a one period, it's an orthopyroxene bearing group. Okay? And all these rocks, these rocks here, these olivine cumulates that you have here, and these rocks in here, all can be serpentinized at temperatures below 500 degrees centigrade, and, uh, and they, so serpentines then form uh, from, from all of these things. I don't know how many of you know about the, 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 the mini saga of the, the nature of the, the state rock of California, yeah. it's serpentine. Uh, we could talk about that later. Okay. 
Two minutes, I thought this should be a quiet spot. Because, all right, what I've shown you here also are where these rocks are exposed on the various stops. Uh, you get a bit of this in here, in, in, and I started to write one in here to say I made a mistake. So it's actually two. We're right at the contact here between the pillars below and the volcanic plastic sediments above. And you'll see these also at stop six and seven. The pillows are here. Sheeted dikes will be at stop three. Uh, very textured gabbros and sheeted dikes at stop four, sort of the contact in here. Layered gabbro at stops, I, where did, what happened to five? Um, this may be five. Okay, yeah, I think this is five. Um, yeah, and six and seven is up here. So, okay, that's five. Excuse that. And then, uh, if we have time, uh, we'll see remnants of, of altered uh, tectonite mantle rocks at stop nine. And at stop eight, we'll see rocks that appear to be underlying this material and so forth. Plagio granites fit in this very textured gap. They fit right at the top of the, of the platonic sequence. Okay? All right. The problem is, that's the, the ideal sequence. Okay? And you can see all these things. But um, the question is, what do you actually see? And, and it gets a little more complicated. Okay, this, this is a, a mixed uh, what's the word? Mixed media construction. This is sort of what you see is 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 uh, a combination here. It's not as easy as as you'd like. What you see to the west are the volcanic clastic sediments in here, and they're also over here to the east. But you can also, then here are pillow lavas in here, coming down through here, in this bluish, purplish unit, and so forth in here. And then there are volcanic plastics in here as well. Then there's a sheeted dike complex that is this color here, and you can see the average sort of uh, attitudes of, of these things in here, trending northwest or dipping eastward but swinging around to the north up in here. There are sheeted dikes up in here also. Sheeted complex underlying Oroville Dam, for what it's worth, okay. There are also volcanic classics up here near Oroville Dam. And, uh, and then there's a bunch of intrusives down in here. And you can see I've got, I've, I put a, a syncline and an anticline in here. This, this is a hand-drawn map, which is then digitized and then has been hand drawn on top of that. So I'm in this, as I say, mixed technology sort of situation. So all of this stuff dips off underneath the Great Valley sediments in here, but there are places in this region in here down to the southeast, there's apparently a thrust relationship of these ophiolitic rocks sitting on top of underlying. Uh, uh, chaotic rocks and meta, uh, meta sediments, and you can see that also basically up in Lake Oroville, where on the west branch of Lake Oroville, where uh, in that region where Highway 70 crosses over uh, the, the, uh, the lake, uh, which we won't go to. So, I mean, this stuff is very large and goes on, so this is just a part of it. If we look at this in cross-section, we'll take a look at this cross-section here, and that looks like, again, this is uh, high-tech, right? So we have a syncline, an anticline in here in, in volcanic clastics, in pillow lavas, and I have, have exerted, you know, I have, I have asserted 
that you see dikes, gabbros, and prudentites underneath that with a thrust contact into under with the underlying rocks in here. I'm sorry? Oh, it's easy. Okay. We take dip in pillow lavas. Um, well, we may be able to see that over there. Um, you can tell the tops of pillow lavas. Pillow lavas are shaped like the top looks like this, and the bottom has a 